Hi guys, this is Jason Zach from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to do something rather strange and rather unconventional, but hopefully it will help develop your musical skills, your sense of timing, your sense of composition and arrangement. We are going to take a song, a rather famous song as you heard in the intro video, and play it in all all possible time signatures every last one of them okay and i'm going to equip you to build it up with even more maybe some a weird prime number you've heard about which i have no clue about like 37 is it a prime number hmm maybe one of those long prime numbers or even a short prime number like maybe 9 11 13 well basically any time signature for like or even something as simple as oh the song's on 3 i want to make it 4 or the song's on 4 and I want to make it 3. 3 by 4 and 4 by 4 are pretty conventional, right? But in the world of 3, are there some variants we can figure out? In the world of uh, 5, can we do a couple of different things in terms of phrasing? Uh, 3 by 4 versus 6, 8. A debate which we have a lot. Let's sort that debate out as well in this lesson to show you how it can sound. Mm, also, uh, how can you play the song straight versus swing? So all of these time manipulations and meter manipulations, accent changes are going to be done in this one lesson. So you'll have to be a bit patient with me. Stay tuned till the very end. Get your keyboards out. And a point I'd like to make before starting the lesson is I'm not going to stick with the same chords or a structured melody because I want to open this out to be any song, any melody, any section or any time signature. So the, the whole idea is to give you an approach to move it around and change it around. We've done one more lesson where I took a conventional piano exercise and then changed it to all sorts of different time signatures. You should probably watch that either after this or pause this, watch that and come back. We'll leave it in the description. And uh, don't forget to head over to our Patreon page for just $5 a month. You'll get my handwritten notes, the staff notation, backing tracks, MIDI files, not just for this lesson, but for all the stuff we have been doing on YouTube. So Patreon also has upper tires, which you could consider. That will enable you to interact with me, do some of our uh, lessons in person. So you can and consider going to Patreon and supporting us. So as you heard in the intro video, I'm going to put a nice tune for us to dive into and unfortunately kind of destroy, so to speak. We are going to take the great song from The Sound of Music called My Favorite Things. So originally it's on E flat minor, but then it goes up a tone in the original. We are not going to get into that complication here. We'll just do it on E minor. So let me first start by playing the song on a simple 3 by 4 originally with just an E minor chord. Do it slowly and just so that we get the feel of the song. I'm sure you already know it. It's a great song. If you haven't already, make sure you watch the movie. It has a bunch of other incredible songs. Raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens Bright copper kettles and warm woolen mittens Brown paper packages tied up with strings These are a few of my favorite things So as you can see the chords change especially in line 3 Paper packages tied up with strings C major maybe These are a G major Few of my C major favorite things Do a dominant which is a B Anyway, if I have to get into chords this lesson will be much longer So just get the melody That's the tune, no? So it, it's a very waltz-like song, isn't it? 3 by 4 dun, 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 dun. Now, in the 3 by 4 itself, the way 3 by 4 is traditionally designed, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, it's designed in this environment which has three strong beats, 1, 2, 3, but it doesn't ever tell you how you want to divide and how, if you ever want, you can swing it as well after division. So it can be... 1 and 2 and 3 and 1 and 2 and 3 and so 
at the very least you can now have a mindset where it's a 3 by 4 but the beats are being divided into two equal units one e and a tuna, one and two and two and two. this is what I like more just to delay raindrops and what she sings in the song is whiskers on kittens so in any case Julie Andrews is dividing the beat by two when she says the word kittens raindrops on row no division whiskers on kittens you can take it a little bit extra by doing raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens you know thumb you can do all sorts of things by dividing by two you can also start saying to yourself okay I'm dividing by two I can also swing it so I'm singing it and superimposing the swing feel as I reimagine the song so to speak let's swing so what happens is when you're in that world of swing somehow some of the notes can just gradually drift they can go either later or ahead of the beat later we call it as delaying you could say before we can say anticipation so one and two and ten, 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 ten. this is the normal melody but so you're in that world of swing even though you're hearing a traditional waltz you're not feeling this as one and two and three dun, ta, 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 no you can get some very interesting like jazzy swing rhythm so It's still three, four, though. One, two. It can inspire you to do something else. That's what I tend to do. It's almost a hack I have for myself when I compose music. Start with something you know mess it up a bit and then it tends to become your own and you lose track of the song you began and began with in the first place okay so that's your default setup your three by four we messed with it a bit by displacing after dividing and we swung it so now let's move to our first challenge of making my favorite things traditionally three four walls into four four so what I like to do now to change the signature especially to 4-4 four, four, is play an arpeggio or play any rhythm pattern which is very I idiomatic and very obviously 4-4. Four, four. So you know what's the most common 4-4 four, four rhythm you would ever do on the piano you know. This is an arpeggio maybe a maybe this sort of a pattern just a broken what we call as umpa 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 so i'm going to do one of these which i know or and now you have to find a way to play raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens in this environment so the way i'd like to start a good start would be the thresio rhythm because it's a three beat phrase it has some off beats, it has some on beats, and it has a lot of variation. So it goes something like one eight and two. So one and two and three and four. Two and three. If you count sixteen, E and a two E and a three. Pum pum. So Is a good start I think to take it to 4-4 four, four.
So one year. Uh, two, uh, two, uh, two, uh, two, uh, verses. Maybe do that. Umpa. With some swing. Like this rhythm, which is swung but four four. Maybe you're kind of moving it into a bluesy version of the song, so to speak. So you can do that ballad arpeggio, which can give you a more soulful. Or swing it with some bluesy, uh, with some bluesy chords. You know. And four and one. So that's a good start, the tresio. And after you take those hits, one knee and a tan doom, tak doom doom. It's very salsa, the backbone of it. You can mess with it. Maybe one knee and a tak doom. The E of the two, the end of the two, and the E of the two are all waiting for you. So one knee and a two E, one knee and a two E, and one knee and a two E, and a two E. Let's see. One. I quite like this. Maybe So Tresio has a lot of modifications. Let's do a couple more before we move on. So that you could do uh, instead of one E and a two E and a one E and a two E and a, you can do one E and a two E and a. That can give you a little bit of a reggae feel. Like that can work and last but not least you can get a maybe a bit more ambitious with 4-4 by superimposing the original time signature the original song no changes with 4-4 somehow by doing what we call in music as a polyrhythm so I do one and two three four so I do this and try out some triplets so you can start dividing by three this is your pulse I'm not dividing every left hand hit exactly by three. That would be too far. That would be like a sixteenth note. I just want a simple eighth note triplet. But if you count this, in the right hand it's going one, two, three, 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 one. Two, three, one. So you can play the original song but with a 4x4 four four vision. You can also dive into that triplet world which is used a lot in India at least. 
थ्री फोर बट द फील्ड सीम्स टू बी फोर बाई फोर वी आर डिवाइडिंग बाय ताकिट 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 ट्रिपलेट स्ट्रिपलेट्स ओके सो दैट्स अ फेयर बिट ऑफ चेंजेस so even with 4 by 4 there are a lot of variations for you to consider to put a stamp on the song and play it with your own personality but we are not going to stop here there are a few more things to do 5 uh, by 8 after 4 comes 5 no so let's do 5 so 5 by 8 you can count it as 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 but phrase it in a couple of ways phrase it either as One two one two three one two one two three one two one two three taka taki ta taka taki ta or taki ta taka taki ta taka taki so if you get taka taki ta taka taki ta or taki ta taka taki ta taka taki ta taka this should now inspire you to rechange the melody so if I do taka taki ta it'll be tum 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 tak tak it tak tak it tak tak it tak tak it tak it tak tak it tak it tak tak it tak tak it 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 tak I do two meets three. One two one two three one two one two three one two three four nine one two three four five 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 one
you can also phrase six eight in some irregular ways like twos and fours uh let's do four meets two one two three four one 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 two one two three four uh it sounds very different doesn't it or maybe two meets four one two three four one two one two two it sounds very much now like three by four so one two three four one two one two three four one two three four one two one two one two three four so i would go with four plus two rather than two plus four in the six eight anyway a couple more before we pack up this lesson so hopefully you can see that it's these accents or these small mini phrases that we create which allows us to understand the time signature and more importantly feel the time signature so after 6 comes 7 let's try that out so 7 can be phrased maybe as 3 meets 4 or 4 meets 3 Why not? So let's try three meets four. One two three four meets three four. One two three one two three four. One two three ba ma ta na ta na na ta. You can voice this out better with some conical symbols like ta ki ta ta ka junu ta ki ta ta ka dimi ta ki ta ta ka dimi. You'll not lose time. So three would be ta ki ta ta ki ta ta ka dimi ta ki ta ta ka junu ta ki ta ta ka dimi ta ta ka do. So one two three one two three four one two three one two three four. One two three one. And the phrase, the music will sound very different. Three plus four versus four plus three. So that will be one two three four. Take it, take it for one, two, three. Take it for one, two, three. One, two, three. For one, two, three. One, two, three. For one, two, three. One, two, three. For four. Take it, take it, take it. 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 Take it, take it, take the smaller number and then the bigger number 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 one, two, three, one, two, maybe chord hits will strengthen the concept more or strengthen the pattern in your head 1 2 3 you can also do different combinations of 2 meets 2 meets 3 1 2 1 2 1 2 3 That's two meets three. You can also move the three in the beginning. One two three, one two three, one two three, one two one three, one two one two one two three. Or put the three in the middle. One two one two three. The song. You almost have different songs for every permutation of the seven, which is three four four three two two three. Three two two or two three three. Now you can go on and on. So I'd leave that to you. But I'd just give one more, one more interesting time signature. Eight by eight is not so interesting because that's pretty much four four. So we'll conclude our lesson with nine by eight, where you can kind of combine and conquer any time signature by by just. taking the earlier one which you already know so 9 by 8 i can do so many things i can make it as 5 plus 4 4 plus 5 can i not or i can do a uh, three groups of three i can maybe do a um, uh, 7 and 2 i am going to prefer a 4 meets 5 for for some reason so i or a 5 meets 4 so let's try 5 meets 4 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 so that 4 feels very relaxing and the 5 feels very chaotic so if i try to superimpose 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 1 
quite like that phrasing already. I'm probably going to use that in another song or a riff, possibly. Right, guys? So you can do this with. I mean, I would encourage you to explore this with pretty much any song. You know, if if you take, um, well, our favorite song, our our most favorite song of all time. So. I wonder what you are. So what I showed you was Twinkle Little Star from 4-4 four, four converted to 3-4. Let's be a bit more ambitious. 1-2-3-4-5. 1-2-3-4-5. 5-8. Another goal could be... Mm, I like to mess with this song from time to time. What about what signature? Just pick one. Seven by eight for Ellie's. Three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, oh, oh, oh. Mm, tack it. One, two, three, four, five, one. Three, four, five, one. So there's a lot you can do if you have a grip of all these time signatures. I hope you got the idea behind the lesson. It is in no ways to to have any disrespect to the song which we kind of destroyed unfortunately. Do make sure you watch the musical The Sound of Music. It's an incredible song. Maybe we can do a breakdown later and I've done one huge breakdown of a Sound of Music song. I just remembered it. Do Re Mi, the most famous one of them all, probably in the movie. We'll leave, we link that up for you in the description. Check that out as well. That'll cover the song explainer and also a nice way to play it on the piano. Okay, guys. So this whole lesson was aimed at you being able to play any song under the sun on any time signature. I hope we got the concept covered and I hope you can use this in your music, in your compositions and change the vibe of what you're trying to do and give yourself more options if not anything. Thanks a ton for watching the lesson. Do consider our Patreon page and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon for regular notifications. Cheers.